Sociologist Charles Murray was supposed to speak yesterday at Middlebury College in Vermont, and he would have done so if a mob of protesters hadn't decided to stop him. Watch. Well, students at the $61,000 per year college called Murray a sexist, anti-gay white supremacist, and otherwise screeched until administrators finally canceled the event because they had to. Protesters later jumped on Murray's car in an attempt to keep him from leaving campus safely. They also injured a professor who was escorting him, forcing her to make a brief stay to the hospital. Well, Carolyn Rouse is an anthropology professor at Princeton University. When Murray spoke at Princeton last year, she led students and faculty in a walkout of that event. <laughs> professor Rouse joins us. Now, Professor, thanks for coming on. Thank so you. I, I've read a lot of the criticism of Charles Murray, um, with whom, whose work I'm pretty familiar, and they don't bear much resemblance to what Charles Murray has actually written. And so I just want you to put a fine point on your complaints about Charles Murray. Why is he beyond the pale? Why should he not be allowed to speak? Well, I'm not sure what you're referring to. What are you referring to in terms of his work? Right? Well, a, a, a couple of things. Um, at Middlebury, he was denounced as anti-gay. He's not in any sense anti-gay that I know of. He was a proponent of gay marriage. He was also denounced by a lot of people, including you, as a purveyor uh, of racial pseudoscience. And whatever you think of his ideas, I don't think anyone would denounce them as pseudoscience, considering his, the book that you're referring to was, was written by, with, by him and by Dick Hernstein, a Harvard professor. And, a real scientist. So I, I wonder what you're talking about exactly. You mean you think that black people have lower IQs than white people? No, I think that the bulk of Charles Murray's scholarship has nothing to do with race at all. And I'm wondering, to be totally blunt with you, Professor, if you've read his books. Yes. Which, which ones did you read? The first one I read was Losing Ground in College. Right. Um, and did, uh, did, did that you read? was mm -hmm. okay. I, I beg your pardon. Go ahead. Well, that was a really interesting book for me because the uh, argument that black people were culturally dysfunctional and had um, all of these behaviors that were incompatible with democracy and capitalism to be fascinating, but completely false or fake news. Okay. G given that I know the black community well. Right. So, I, yes, I, I read the that book was too, my and I, wake up. I, 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 don't, I don't remember him making uh, the case that, the, that black people were somehow unable to live in a democracy. Did you read The Bell Curve? Yeah, I read parts of The Bell Curve, yes. Okay, but not the entire Bell Curve. No, I didn't read the entire Bell Curve, and I read the critiques of The Bell Curve as well. Okay. But are you, you know, the so Southern I guess Poverty my... Law Center has a dossier on him. I don't want to debate whether or not he's made claims about the sort of the degeneracy of black people and poor whites. It's well, just not a, it's just, it's just a fact. So but, you, if you want to talk about freedom of speech and his right to speak freely, I think that makes sense. But what he's written is, is out there for the public, and I don't think that we need to debate that. Well, but, it's, but that's kind of your point, is that it's known and we don't need to debate it, but you've already conceded that his central work, The Bell Curve, you haven't actually read. You've read critiques of it, you've read part of it, but you haven't read the book. And instead, you point to the Southern Poverty Law Center, and there, a, do, which is a political what? organization. I'm just saying, shouldn't you take the scholarship seriously, and then if you disagree, explain you, why? You know what? There's a black man who wrote about how people with more melanin are more intelligent. Do I need to read this work? Do I need to invite this person to Princeton to speak because he's written about how black people are more intelligent than white people? Do I but need to waste my time? Do I need to waste your time? Do I need to waste the institution's resources because he said it? Just because somebody says something doesn't mean I need to be wasting my time reading every word they've written. I have other things in my life to do. They're more positive and constructive and more interesting scholarship well, out there. Oh, sure, but one of the things that you're spending your time doing is trying to prevent other people from expressing their views I on the basis of incomplete Not knowledge. At all. We okay. didn't at all. We, we let him speak. We didn't shout him out. We literally just walked out the door before he spoke. But don't you think, I guess the larger point here, and it seems like it would appeal to you as an academic, is that if you disagree with the point someone is making, you should understand exactly what it is they're saying, because the bell curve was not primarily about race at do all. You know, do you know and that and, and how much you're not energy rebutting. you you we black 
scholars and people who worked on African American have had to spend so much time challenging racist scholarship and not enough time doing positive work. At some point, we have to stop paying attention to this. Just because somebody says something and they're, they're wealthy and privileged doesn't mean that we all need to go running and accept it as good, good scholarship or treat it as legitimate. There's a lot of bad scholarship out there. But you His don't, work is bad scholarship. But I you don't know what it is because you haven't read it. You, you haven't read the entire all book, of it. No, which I was not about race except for a small have, section of it. And it and was actually that, an important yeah. book. So I would think you'd want to grapple with the ideas in there, but you don't. And I wonder why. Do you know how many important books I bet you haven't read? Many. I'm not weighing in on them in the way that you are. Yes. You're passing judgment on something you don't understand. And that's what bothers me. You said I don't understand it. I that's do. That's correct. What's I the do thesis work of the bell in, curve? In, I do work in biological anthropology. There's okay. absolutely no such thing as degeneracy of a certain population, which he claims based upon poor whites are degenerate, poor right. black people are degenerate. He has a thesis that these genes are floating in these populations and they're no longer able to take advantage of the freedoms and democracy that we have in this country. And yeah. so therefore, you know, yeah, I, I, I having know read that, the book. I think you're 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 grossly mischaracterizing it. Um, grossly mischaracterizing it, and I'm, uh, and I'm surprised you're, that if you're claiming you read the whole thing. But let me ask you the free speech part, which you, you brought up. Do you think that people have a right to say things that you find offensive? Do you agree with the Middlebury protesters? Absolutely. Oh, do I agree with that? Well, those are two different things. Well, I, if you're supporting uh, shouting someone down, obviously you don't think people no, have a right to say what shout, they think. No, we never shouted Charles Murray down. He was allowed to speak. Our no, protest I'm, was about Millbury. internally. I'm sorry. Right. So, Tucker Carlson. Yes, sir. We yeah. have a limited pool of resources at Princeton. Right. I don't think we need to be spending money on this. There are many, and your audience knows this, many lower middle class white people, many uh, working class white who would love to get an education. Let's spend that money on helping them go to school, right? That's what we need to spend that money on, not on constantly sort of giving money and resources to scholars who already we know their scholarship just doesn't pass the medal. So yeah, I don't, I don't think, I don't, I, by the way, you're overstating the degree which there's a consensus on that. I think a lot of serious people regard Charles Murray as serious. But let's get to the Middlebury protest. Do you mm -hmm. think it's okay for people to prevent a speaker from speaking because they disagree with him? No, that's why we didn't do that. Okay. They're allowed to speak, but we do not want our institutional resources going towards, for instance, somebody who claims that people with more melanin are more intelligent. We don't want that kind of stuff in Charles our Charles Murray didn't university. claim that. He didn't no, make that No, but there claim. are people who do. That's my point. <laughs> okay. it's, his work is as absurd to me as that. Yeah. Well, I would, I would challenge you to, to, to read it and then pass an informed judgment on it. I think that might be more effective. We're out of time. Professor, thanks for joining us. Thank you.